Hello you good people and welcome back. It's really nice that for the first video of 2023, it's going to be a graphics card review video. But before I start, I want to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of you for your support in the last two years, as well as our friends from various distributors and tech manufacturers in Singapore for giving me an opportunity to review their products and share it widely with the community here on this channel. To kick off this video, thank you once again to AMD for sharing with us not just one, but two of their latest GPUs, the Radeon RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. I know I'm a bit late because of festives and all. These graphics cards were launched mid-December, very timely after Nvidia's RTX 4090 launched in October and 4080 launched in November. Now, Nvidia's RTX 40 series GPUs were launched with an upgrade from the previous Ampere architecture to the latest Ada Lovelace architecture. Both the latest 4th gen tensor cores to support DLSS 3, an upgrade from the previous DLSS 2, and up to 4 times performance boost, as well as 3rd gen ray tracing cores, which allows for 2 times enhanced ray tracing performance. Well, this is what they say, but what does all these actually translate to? Per NVIDIA, the RTX 4090 can perform two times or more in terms of FPS performance as compared to the RTX 3090 Ti. Now, this is significant, but so is the price point at $1,600. US dollars. The RTX 4080, on the other hand, is expected to perform two times and more as compared to the RTX 3080 Ti and goes at an MSRP of $1,200. US dollars. So when AMD launched their latest GPUs, that's the benchmark they have to meet. With the Radeon RX 7900 series, these GPUs are built on the RDNA 3 architecture, an upgrade compared to the RX 6000 series. Now what AMD is promising is that with the RDNA 3, you get Gen 2 ray tracing accelerators as well as the AMD Infinite Cache, which will deliver up to 50% improvement in ray tracing performance and better power consumption as compared to the RX 6000 series. And of course, AMD has got extra perks in the pocket, such as support for DisplayPort 2.1 as well as USB-C, and promising to support 8K resolution at 165Hz. Now you've heard me right, Nvidia's RTX 4090 supports a max 8K resolution at 60Hz. So this is really quite something very useful for creators, Although it's going to be a very, very small subset of the general market out there that's going to be able to benefit from this as well as appreciate this unique feature. Well, that said, on 4K resolution, the Radeon RX 7900 series is going to be able to give you 4K resolution at 240Hz, similar to the NVIDIA's RTX 4090 as well as 4080. Very quickly, let's take a look at these GPUs. This is the Radeon RX 7900 XT. Now this packaging from AMD is just so cool that just the experience of unboxing this, the experience feels very exquisite. From a marketing perspective, if you ask me, if you want to tell the world that this is your premium product, this is how you do it. One of the key selling points of the Radeon RX 7900 series is definitely the size of the GPUs. This 7900 XT is tiny. It's a 2.5 slot GPU measuring a length of 276 mm by 135 mm in width and 51 mm thick. What it means for you is that it opens up tons of opportunities, especially for small form factor enthusiasts as myself, where most 3 fans GPUs are easily 300 mm and above in length. Now, build wise, it is extremely solid in material. In fact, it is heavy. I'm not sure what weight it is, but this is heavy. The two sides are the only areas of heat dissipation. And here you can see that it sports one HDMI 2.1 port, two DisplayPort 2.1 and one USB-C port. In terms of power, straightforward, it has two 8-pin connectors and a recommended 750 watts of power supply. It's a very simple, handsome, matte black GPU, no RGB.
On the other hand, this is the Radiant RX 7900 XTX. First look seems like both packaging is similar externally. They are in fact the same size. So if you've gone to the store and the retailer mistaken them and gave you the pricier 7900 XTX instead of the 7900 XT, you should honestly point it out and exchange it with the retailer. Yeah, right. Anyway, the distinction happens once you open it and voila, someone had designed the box to prop out the GPU once you open the box. It's really neat. It takes the premium to another level or unless the GPU is way heavier, that tugging it out is a little bit tricky but well, let's not be half cup empty. Even with the RX 7900 XTX, it is very small in size given it is AMD's most powerful GPU to date. It still managed to be a 2.5 slot GPU, measuring a mere 287mm in length, 135mm in width, and 51mm thick. There are many things in life I'd say big is better, but in this case, this size is really good. The design is similar to the 7900 XT, heavier in my opinion, and in fact has RGB along these two strips. It also sports one HDMI 2.1 port, to the DisplayPort 2.1 and one USB-C port. In terms of power, it requires two 8-pin connector and a recommended 800 watts of power supply. Now, specs-wise, the 7900 XTX is an upgrade in every way for 100 US dollars more based on MSRP. And if you compare it with the higher-end GPUs of the RX 6000 series, the 6900 XT costs the same as the 7900 XT but it's built on an older gen architecture and has lower specs. So not only is the 7900 series attractive in its size, it has an even more attractive MSRP price point. You'll notice I keep emphasizing MSRP because you know that that's not real retail prices, but that's as the benchmark. And we'll see how this goes over time. The closer competitor, in my opinion, is more likely the RTX 4080 or the RTX 3090 Ti, which has a closer MSRP of $1,200 US and $1,100 US respectively. Comparing the performance of the Radeon RX 7900 XT, 7900 XTX, and the RTX 4080 on 4K resolution, we do see that these GPUs carefully trail ahead and behind each other in various games, but close. The Radeon 7900 XTX almost always outperforms the RTX 4080, not to forget that it is also priced $100 cheaper. So from this point, we know that AMD's Radeon 7900 series is really attractive up against Nvidia's RTX 4080. But for non-competitive gamers who value an immersive gaming experience, would know that Nvidia pioneered in their ray tracing technology for the longest time. And the key question would be, has AMD finally caught up close with the RDNA 3 architecture and Fidelity FX Super Resolution advancements. Here's how the Radeon RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX does in 1440p, with ray tracing on and off with FSR on. Honestly, I feel that AMD has made a significant leap with their latest Radeon 7900 series graphics cards. Now, surely it is not the most powerful GPU today, but it is coming close and they know this. And they are not competing with the RTX 1490. They are also not leading with ray tracing performance. And so they price themselves accordingly. Do they want to be a market leader of some sorts? Definitely yes but perhaps not in producing the most powerful GPU. That's not what they want to do. Perhaps producing a GPU with the best performance per dollar is more of their strategy. You see, this market is huge, but if you split it into proportions, you will have the professional creators and 4K gamers versus the mid to high range 1440p gamers and casual creators, as well as the 1080p gamers. Now, if you look at these three spectrums, the former is not the largest subset. Not to forget that Apple competes strongly and fiercely in the creator space. So I don't think AMD is going in that direction. And what they have delivered with these Radeon 7900 series graphics cards is good performance for 4K users, a bit ray tracing takes a give and take, 
and the price point is really attractive. So I would say that if you are a competitive gamer, playing mainly FPS games on 4K, then these makes a great option for you. And also if you are a mini ITX enthusiast on 4K, these make very, very good options as well because the choice of your cases are almost limitless. And assuming that MSRP is going to be real retail price, then I would say that amongst the two, I would definitely go for the 7900 XTX because it has RGB. Now I'm just kidding because it's because it's a value for money upgrade for just a hundred bucks more, in my opinion. Now let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think is the potential for AMD GPUs and if stock availability and MSRP all prevails between the Radeon 7900 series versus the NVIDIA's RTX 4000 series, which one would be your take? Now, looking forward to hearing all that. Do subscribe to us if you're new to us. Otherwise, thank you for being with me and I will see you in the next one.